Hi, right, good morning. <laughs> yeah, so my talk's going to be a bit different, a bit less technical than we, we, the ones we've had so far. Um, and I'm the CIO at Taunton Somerset NHS Foundation Trust. And having heard that first talk this morning about um, hospitals without walls, it's a bit unfortunate I'm starting off with a picture of a hospital with very big walls. Um, we're, we're one of the sites that's lucky enough to be having further investment in the hospital to, to build a new surgical unit, theatre unit, and a maternity unit. But all the time, as I'm sure many of you are who work in NHS Trust, we're competing with that kind of uh, funding source to, to get funding for digital, uh, which is part of, uh, of our argument. But today, uh, really, just I want to talk through our, our journey. Uh, first of all, a bit of background. The challenge we face, uh, some of the thinking we had as we went through a part of the solution, whether this solution actually exists or not, and what that looks like, and then a few of our uh, lessons learned. So in background, uh, Taunton and Somerset, for those of you who don't know, Somerset's in the southwest of England, famous, I think, for just really two things. The first is it's fantastic cider, and the second is that you get stuck in traffic jams on the way on holiday to Cornwall and Devon. So they're the prime, prime things for, for uh, Taunton and Somerset. Um, we're a, a digital exemplar site, but not really because we're particularly digitally mature. It's just that we took a different approach to the mega suites that you took earlier. Um, Cerner and Epic, we took the, initially the best of breed approach and we're building on an open source PaaS to try and develop an electronic health record. To complicate things further, and that's why it, it is important that that message about the hospital without walls and even uh, care without walls, is that we're now merging with Somerset Partnership Trust, which is a mental health and community trust. So we're starting to need to be able to share our information more broadly than just within an acute trust. And I'm sure that's reflected amongst many of the organizations um, here. So in, in terms of the uh, starting point where we, where, before we met our challenge, um, as I said, we, we, were, um, we implemented an open source PaaS, which is the IMS Maxims PaaS. Um, it was a very successful implementation. This was about four or five years ago. Uh, relatively low cost compared to the mega suites. And we had a, a contract to develop that and work alongside best of breed applications to put in and develop an EHR. We worked with a company called ePro on our clinical correspondence and we're completely paperless in outpatients and that's worked really well. And across Somerset we have Audicoms and PACs put in so we work as a, already as joined up organizations across the county. We also have a large number of departmental systems. We have around 200, not quite a thousand that we mentioned earlier on, but still too many. Um, but mo most recently, we put in the ophthalmology system and ITU, as many of the acute uh, sites will have put in. And they've been extremely successful, and we tried to integrate those as best we can. As part of our GD work, we are looking at the wraparound the technology, not just the technology itself. So we've always focused on person um, focus engagement, whether it's a clinician, the patient, the citizen of Somerset. Um, we started off and we did quite a lot of work with um, DeepMind and we were very much aware that we had to be very open with the citizens of Somerset about what we were going to do with that data, if we were going to use it at all or any work that we did. So we spent a lot of time out in the town centres, in the hospitals, in the clinics and working all around Somerset, talking to people about what is it we're going to do with their data, how we intend to develop. And we've kept that working right through so we still have an awful lot of people, many of whom were quite cynical about what we were doing, coming to work with us on our workshops and our design workshops as we look at that user interface and about how mobile devices or whatever devices we're putting into the hospital or the clinic interacts with the patient. We try to build our technical capability within the team. We have very much a clinically-led uh, digital vision and clinicians are embedded into our team right from the clinical leaderships. So we have two CCIOs, one of which is a surgeon, one of which is a consultant rheumatologist which helps give um, us direction and make sure it keeps us grounded. But it's very much a uh, multi-angle view where the clinicians work with the, the technical experts alongside the project management and the gener general management of the organization to make it work. So we have got a very strong team and we keep trying to build that team, which is quite tricky when you're situated between Bristol and Exeter who keep nicking all our staff. And we've t built on that open systems approach as much as we can, and that is where we found some of the limitations. So um, as well as that initial open source IMS Maxim system, we've always looked for open standards and procuring any system that will work with us on that interoperability. 
So this is quite a sort of simplistic view of how we envisage getting to that GDE within three years. Um, expanding the team's capability, um, making sure we complete, keep, complete, uh, keep on working with people across Somerset to make sure we take them with us, and particularly our clinicians. Learning lessons from anything that we do wrong or anything that we do right, looking at the data that we're producing. We wanted to build an EPR and EHR and achieve that digital exemplar status. So that's quite plain sailing, really. But it didn't quite work out like that. We came across, as well as uh, several, a lot of successes, we also had quite a few challenges, not least of which was the approach meant that we're taking slow progress because we were constantly prototyping and trying to develop and learn from those prototypes. Um, although it was agile working, it was quite um, probably the wrong term, really. It was very slow development um, and very frustrating. And we had a very specific target. We wanted to look at other ways of, of um, achieving that. So we, we really wanted to learn from what we've done so far and re-strategize, re if there's such a word, and really take advantage of the opportunity that was in front of us. So the challenge is quite complex, really, but it, it, in terms of the four main parts of where we were, we are having problems with the data. It was getting siloed. Although the suppliers were saying that things were interoperable, they weren't truly, and I'm sure many of you will have experienced that. In terms of the complexity, it was an incredibly complex environment with the uh, increasing number of systems that we had to deal with and the, uh, the integration that we were trying to develop. We needed to learn at pace, but we found there was a lack of ag agility, and we kept coming across delays, whether that was in testing or development. And in terms of suppliers, it was more an, an issue about capacity and the speed that we were trying to do things um, that was creating a, a, an issue for us. And in this prototyping world, it's not just as simple as turning on a new module. And the innovation that we were trying to put in place was a, an incredibly challenging journey. I'm sure we would get there eventually, but we just didn't have that luxury of time. So we started looking at other options, um, right through the, the, the normal gambit of, of options, but we were under quite a bit of time pressure. In terms of a full EPR procurement, the mega suite, before we um, adopted the IMS Maxim product, we had one of the national products in place. It really was rejected by the organization as being inflexible, and for us, it was too costly. Uh, obviously, other sites near us have taken a different view. In terms of building our own supplier EPR, well, we've tried that, and we had mixed success, so we need to move on from that. We considered the other three options. The large best of breed, again, very, uh, quite inflexible, and the integration was really just still very complex for us to manage in, in our environment. And equally, the multi-specialist, even more so, increasingly complex, although the functionality was there for our clinicians. So we looked at the portal hybrid um, solution. We had already uh, selected the open EP solution, so we were aware of its capabilities. At that, at that point, we weren't live, we were still in, in test and configuration mode. Uh, but it meant that we didn't have to rule out our key suppliers. We could keep those working relationships with our existing suppliers, um, which we had had some success with. It meant that we could create additional agility and bring in new suppliers, and also, in some areas, have some local control in terms of simple functionality. As I say, we, we, we were quite careful here because we do have problems recruiting and retaining staff in a very competitive market, playing NHS rates, and in a very competitive area with such large universities, particularly on either side of us. The model was aligned strategically with what we wanted to do and allowed us to grow flexibly over the, uh, uh, in the future. But there were disadvantages. Um, certainly in the UK, it's relatively unknown. We work very closely with our colleagues in Plymouth on their open EP solutions. So that was, that was great experience. But we also think that not all of these strands will succeed. There's an awful lot of new suppliers coming into the market. Some will, will, will work, some won't. And we also need to think about our own team, about how we change that team. And I'll pick that up in, in, in a while. So our path to a solution. So we already had the open platform or part of that in place. Um, we were used to integrating existing systems. We didn't have in place the clinical data repository, so we had to think about uh, what we would use for that and how we'd go about it. But it would mean that as part of the GD targets, that is to achieve a HIMSS level six, seven uh, achievement. And it also meant that we would have a single place for the patient record and even the citizen record in the future. Taking that further, it meant that we could bring in best of type solutions, uh, bring in apps, bring in different suppliers, and also do our own development in-house to produce different solutions. 
one of the most important parts was for us was to be able to use that data in different ways and to actually use it for insight and for uh, changing our practices and enabling improvement. We have an in-house improvement team who we work very closely with, um, who we use as effectively management consultants. And, and increasingly, as things are changing within the environment, it's important that we can link with our colleagues across Somerset uh, and across this whole of the Southwest Peninsula as well as nationally and developing a full shareable data model, data liquidity. So to turn that uh, problem picture on its head, this is how we felt the solution was starting to form up. That with data, it would be open, interoperable, and standards-based. We could learn at pace. It was much more agile, because we had different suppliers working in different ways, and our own team working as well. It meant that we could change that complexity and take, make it just more simple in, in certain parts and manage that complexity. And the suppliers, we could use best of type. We could play to people's strengths in terms of their capability. And we'd also be really basing this all on open standards and on that open platform and the portal. And we started to work with um, Better on developing a portal view so we could see into that data and have access into that data. So does it exist and what does it look like? Our view of that model uh, in a very simple way was to build up our, and integrate our existing systems we have um, e-prescribing, as I say, we, we're, we're live with um, better in only uh, a, a war, one ward at the moment, about to expand out into cardiology. We're also working with ePro, our document management system, which is also integrating into Morant, and we're sharing allergy information, discharge summaries, et cetera, with them. But it means that we can also start bringing in best of uh, suites, whether that's in apps or different functionality through different systems on the left-hand side, through noting and forms, et cetera. Though it gives us a lot of options and linking through to that open air platform and to the clinical data repository, which means that we can develop dashboards and insights and information reporting, as well as potentially giving us uh, an expanding view for uh, research, which is another area which is of interest as we work with the University of Exeter and the University of Plymouth. So there is, in reality, this is one of the um, assessment forms uh, uh, we're trialling out on the ward at the moment. We have OpenEP and the task lists um, live on, uh, on the ward. And we're bringing that together through the portal that we started to develop with um, Better to start bringing all those different sources of information together so that the clinician's got a view of the whole picture. As I said, what was really important to us was to make sure we could unlock the data in different ways. The, the data structured, um, is standardized. We're creating a local data repository. We can integrate the data through different systems and sites across the region, across Somerset, or across the whole southwest. And we believe that it's uh, future-proofed, as we've heard this morning, that as it, as it moves forward, it'll be useful for research. It certainly will support BI and AI. So in terms of developing the platform for Insight, this is the uh, simple drugs chart. But we can now start to integrate that with working with uh, blood tests and see how things interact. And we can also see how uh, clinicians act in terms of medicines administration, and we can pick up uh, issues or problems or changes in process very quickly. Um, the blue-green is, is the normal uh, dosage administration. The red shows where there's been a, uh, an, an emission. So we can start seeing that with some of the clinicians so that we have do, got, do have some issues here, and at least it allows us to start asking questions. So we're starting to integrate the data and start to model things in a different way and make it very vis visible as to what's going on. So what about the lessons uh, that we've learned so far? So we want to build on successful solutions. We want to make sure that we meet both clinical and organizational expectations, which are changing, which is really quite challenging. It's challenging, we heard earlier on about some of the, the views of the clinicians about the existing systems and their functionality. So it's got to work in, in a mobile way on the wards, but also in different environments, and also work in a different way as we start working with patients and the way they access their information. The organizational expectations are changing all the time as we move away from a single acute trust into acute community and mental health and work more and more with social care as well. 
we want to make sure we can deliver these uh, solutions quickly and in, in an agile way. And this gives us different options to work both with our local teams with small suppliers and also large suppliers and, and be able to integrate that um, with our platform. We also work very closely with our improvement team, um, making sure that as we move through this agile development, we're changing the processes, looking at the business models, and doing the best thing across the organization as we merge organizations and things flow more between the acute and community. And that engagement piece is still very key to what we're doing. So it, 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 we're increasing the amount of engagement we do with clinicians and with our patients and citizens in uh, Somerset, working very closely with them to explain what's going on and, and what, how this will work and how we're going to keep their data safe. So in terms of that change that we need to make to our own organization, we're creating a different kind of team. So we're changing the role slightly and just making sure that we can cope with this changing environment. So we have the technical and agile team supported by clinical work, workers embedded within that team. We have improvement support who we work very closely with. This is all wrapped around very much with clinical safety and information governance. So we take a risk management approach to clinical safety to make sure that what we're doing is appropriate and it's uh, safe. And we have a whole scoring mechanism and a whole process that wraps around that. We work with our clinicians, making sure there's clinical oversight to the work that we're doing. It's clinically led. And the clinicians work with us on that digital leadership to make sure that that's fully integrated in, in everything we do. So, and in summary, we're mature, what we're doing is we're building on solid foundations. So we have our engagement piece, which is um, ongoing and is increasing. We're increasing our team's capability to work both technically and in change management and improvement. And we're also looking at the different solutions that are available. We spoke earlier on that this is quite an immature market within the UK, but we're working with those who are available and who are looking to um, invest in this type of technology in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Andrew. That's fascinating. We have time for a couple of questions. And I'm going to say, before I say anything else, or is Yaka's going to kill me, he's going to come up and murder me on stage, all of the slides and all of the videos will be made available through um, probably different avenues, but certainly through the openair.org website. So that's done. Sorry, questions? How to operate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I quite agree. I think one of the things about the um, global digital exemplar program is the blueprinting, and one of the things we've been able to do with that seed funding is to do something different and to start learning the lessons about working with open air platforms. And certainly, what we will be doing is producing blueprints uh, of the way we've approached that to share with the organisations. And also, we have um, open discussions on the back of that with other organisations such as. Plymouth and with our fast followers, why, but with a whole string of other organizations about that approach. So in a way, it is starting to spread. But So it's, a, it's like a bottom-up approach rather than a top-down approach, maybe. Yeah, but it's making sure that uh, success gets shared, I think. Yeah. You know, it's 50 years since we wrote the paper, Medical Records That Guide and Teach. 30 billion, 20 years on from this initiative, we still haven't achieved a unified record. One yeah. wonders why that hasn't been done. Yeah. And maybe we need to make better use of the kind of initiatives that you're... Sure. Yeah. But I, th I think if I'm really honest, I think we're learning too. So I think we, we wouldn't be uh, there to say how to do this. It's more of a discussion at the moment about an approach because it's early days. Time for one more. Thank you very much. Enjoyed that. Can you say a little bit about the, the clinical workflow? I mean, you've, used, you've taken a portal approach with an open platform. Has that has the architecture really mattered, as, or is it more about the workflow where you've focused your efforts? And what's, you know, what the success has been? Yeah, no, we, we have uh, certainly initially been focusing very much on workflow. Um, and that's been, I suppose, because of the background we've had coming from developing uh, from an open source system, that everything we do is workflow based. 
I think what we're doing now is looking at um, the limitations of that workflow, how we can think about how that fits into um, an open architecture, how we can use that data more freely across a whole uh, environment rather than just within the acute trust. Uh, we, I think we've almost had too much focus on the workflow within the acute. We've got to think about how more broadly we can flow that information out to the community, but also how the patient can interact with that in terms of taking control of their own information, uh, booking out patients or managing their own care and recording that. So that's going to be quite an interesting uh, dynamic. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we'll have to move. Can you ask your, que ask your question again at the end because we're going to have a panel session. So if you can hold it till then. Okay, thanks very much, Andrew. Thank you.